Hey guys, busy day, busy week, all kinds of things going on. Uh, been to the fair, got a result for you. I've been to a concert last night. I'm going to share all that with you in this busy episode. But um, to start things off, this episode is about floating bridges. Now, I did a big, long episode, everything about floating bridges. And there's going to be an I card up there. Hover your mouse, click on that. Um, and, and you can see that, but we're going to do a little gumshoe detective work here and kind of give you a quick rundown on floating bridges. A subscriber, Michael Phelps, had a question for me about just what's inside of these things and how they work. So that's what this episode is going to be about. Now, as always, don't forget at the bottom, click, um, like, click, subscribe. I've actually petitioned um, YouTube to try to give me some kind of a sign that says a uh, no something or other for you metric haters out there. <laughs> Got you again. Come on. I'm, I'm just getting one dislike. Come on. There's more of you than one out there. And I, I've got an audience all over the world. So you're by yourself. Um, maybe I should do a musical, musical shout out. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, to when, when you're old and lonely or something like that. But hey, metric hater, hang in there, buddy. So anyway, back to reality. Floating bridge, up close and personal. Let's hit the bench. Okay, guys, before I get started, I got so much stuff going on here. I got bottlenecks and I got name it. And I really have to scold myself and give you a, a tip. Um... When you've got your bench like this, your setup isn't right. You're all cramped. You can't turn things the way you need them. You can't get your layout right. And your performance on your instruments and stuff just ain't right. So you want to get this cleaned up a little bit. And I swear I'm going to do that before the next episode because I want to be able to spread my work out and do it right, okay? Anyway, you'll just have to deal with this like this for now, and we'll make sure our setup's better later. Again, topic is floating bridge. Uh, you see it's arched. Why is it arched? Well, these things go on what's called an arch top, okay? Now, somebody figured out that um, instead of having a flat top guitar, if you arch it like this, you can see it's got a bow to it. The top, the crown of it is is taller. Um, you've got F holes here. Yeah, this is what an F hole is, okay? I did an episode about F holes. It's up here. It's clean. It's G-rated. But anyway, on these arch tops, these F holes, uh, the arch of this gives the guitar body more um, volume um, and it resonates better. So that's why they have these things. Now, did you see? Yeah, that's Bob Log, the third signature right there. Uh-huh. Anyway, you see that this is arched, which means this would have to be arched. If it's not arched, then, and if it was flat and it wouldn't give right up here in this area. No, I'm not flipping you off. I'm just trying to be uh, dexterous. Or whatever the word is, um, if this didn't give here and you put something flat on this, it would collapse the arch of the arch top, probably crack the wood and everything. But let me get this out of the way and I'll show you how this is. Point of the matter here is some things just need to be arched and they don't do well laying flat, that's for sure. So I'm going to give you a practical application here. I'm working on uh, this white owl uh, vintage box and I've been working on this for a bit so I'm going to pick up the pace I've got some Holly Springs Mississippi matchbooks to put on the neck and stuff um, but but right now I'm getting ready to lay out the bridge and it's going to be a floating bridge so remember this handy ruler we made on the scale and in a nation episode can I give you an I-card up there about that right about now, too? I'm going to be running out of I-cards pretty quick because I only get five per episode. Anyway, I've got the 12th fret 
taped out here with blue tape. Can we see that? Am I in there? No, there it is. I can't even see. Anyway, we got that uh, 12th fret marked out there. Let me see how my camera angle is. That's better. And so, if it's 25 and a half scale between the knot uh, and the bridge, I'm going to lay this here, and that means it's 12 and 3 quarter to the line right there. So I'm going to make a mark there, and I'm going to come around to the other side. Again, I've got this blue taped so we can see right where that 12th fret is. Put it right there, and I've got a mark there. And I took this, uh, made a mark here. I don't have to worry about this. Is this going to be covered up here? And like so. Now, I just need to make sure I know where the center of this is by the box and the center of where this part of the floating bridge is. So before I get into the details of how this comes apart, again, I wanted to mark the center here. I take my ruler. I'm going to put it, see there and there, where the thumb screws are. I'm going to put it there and there. I got 56, which means the center of it is at 28. And I'm going to mark that on both sides. Man, I give you guys so many metric hating opportunities in my episodes. Ain't I awesome? So, whatever I do. It's marked there and there. You see that? I'm going to make sure I know where the center of my box here is. One more metric hating opportunity. It is 152, which means the center of the box is 76. You just see how quickly you can do work with the metric system. So I'm ultimately going to line that up right there. And on this line where these holes, the center of these holes, I can see that line through there, like so. Okay, trying to get my setup right here. Back to you, Michael Phelps. Um, the way these things are is this slips off of here like this. These are just two holes. You see that? This part's flat. Now, I'm going to end up having at some point to take this onto the end of a belt sander again up in that eye card up there on the floating bridge episode it shows you how to do this and I can belt sand this down and everything as I need to to make this measurement right for uh, my strings going over um, the frets and all that but again this slips off of here now these thumb screws come right off like so leaving you this stud that I can just take it's got an allen head on it so I can just back this out of here like this. See that? And it's got a pointed end. And again, the other end is an Allen head. Now, I just back both of these out of here like so. Let's get them here. I just spin them around like this. I end up with this and then you can see that there were just holes there that are threaded so now I've got these pieces separate from the bridge I pitch this off to the side and I'm going to end up wanting this to be here like so so I mark the center you see that center lining up there and I look down and I make sure that I can see that center line, once this is lined up, that these are right over. So I'm looking down in here with a light. And if I can see my center line, I'm good. If not, I adjust it this way or this way. Again, it's critical that this is lined up here. And these are lined up like so. Now I'm going to take an awl or an ice pick. I'm only going to worry about one at a time. I'm going to make a mark there like that. And then I'm going to make a mark here like this. So when I pick this up, I want to be careful because this is an old box. When I pick this up, 
I'm going to have a mark there and a mark there. Now, if it's not just perfectly over the line, I can bring it over here like this. But I'm just going to tap that a little bit so I've got a starter hole for when I drill. See that? Okay, now I'm going to take a bit, a drill bit, that is about the same size as this stud here. Okay? And... It's actually better if it's a tad smaller because when I drill this through, like so, I'm going to be real easy with this. Like so. Get those two holes done like that. I am going to take this now, that pointed end down, uh, and I am going to put that into the top of the box and I'm going to take my Allen wrench and get this started and run both of them in and I'll show you what it looks like it's just basically screwing these in like this and I'll get with you in a minute okay and I'm running the second one down like so um, on the Camacho boxes I usually use these things will squeal when you're putting them in and that's okay it says it's it's tight but once those are in I'm gonna just do run them down like that and then this will drop right on there and if I've done everything right everything will line up like so now again I may end up having to grind this down a little bit or sand this down and do the same thing here once I've got this all in order where the strings are at the right height and everything like that. I want to make sure that I can adjust this up in case I want to raise the strings. It's easier to do that than to try to have somebody try to adjust it down because the strings are too high. So once I get all that done, when I'm all done, I'm going to take and put a little bit of epoxy here. I could also use uh, a nylon insert nut that fits this I could do that there and then epoxy it uh, just to make sure that these are stable we don't want these moving on this old box um, once that's done you let the epoxy dry up and then you just put this up and you're good to go um, this lets, gives you a great deal of versatility up and down but again don't epoxy this part on until you know your string height and everything is right it's just that simple okay there you go that was pretty simple these things are awesome to use and uh, you can typically get one for less than ten dollars and they uh, they make your builds a lot easier you don't have to worry about bolts and threads and, and stuff like that slip and so they stay in tune uh, and they can adjust up and down and all kinds of things like that so the end of this episode is going to be a little bit busy first we're going to take a look at what happened to number one my california license plate guitar with a shotgun holes in it and then we're going to look at kendra's purse because we thought they were going to be competing against each other let's see what happened and what do you know there's kendra's purse and it won first place for the best fair themed craft awesome Kendra and the moment we've all been waiting for there's the guitar Bingo. Best of division, best of show. I think there's a lot of crocheters and yarners and potters and everybody else pissed off. I think that maybe next year I won't enter anything because ooh, I'm yawning right now, but I'm starting to get a lot of these things you know what I'm saying hey that's pretty cool huh um, that uh, license plate guitar is going to England um, 
it's going to be a little bit before it goes off because I like have to see a chiropractor and get my health addressed because, um, yeah, I hurt my back pretty badly uh, carrying all of the ribbons I won at the county fair. That seems to be an annual occurrence for me. Hey, I got great health insurance. Maybe the only one in the United States that does. All right, finally, we're getting towards the end. Let's switch out the Longhorns hat and put on the restaurant hat because I got to see my friend Troy Murrah and Tyler Whiteside from restaurant play. They were the opening act for Echo Park Rising. Um, checked in with him about the coffee can, the four string coffee can. It's coming up pretty soon. I'll have footage when that comes out. But let's close this out by watching restaurant perform at Echo Park Rising. See you soon. <music>